can immune protection be transferred via antibodies that we breathe out? We discussed this topic before in one of the YouTube videos, which unfortunately got banned. However, the publication in that video has recently gone through peer review. When we discussed it, it was still just a preprint. So let's talk about it again. My name is Dr. Mikola Rashik of Neurogenomics. And let's get started. So basically these authors were mentioning, listen, clearly you pass viruses through breathing them out. So it would not be that crazy to consider that you could potentially maybe breathe out the antibodies as well, because it's known that both IgG, IgG and IgA antibodies would be present inside your mouth. And that's well established post COVID or vaccination. So these authors wanted to see is passive transfer of antibodies possible via mouth? And so the first thing they did is they basically took masks or of individuals after a full day of work and they cut out pieces of the masks. They eluded antibodies from what they were attempting to do is elude the antibodies with a specific methodology and see whether they were they were able to catch antibodies that would recognize spike protein. And they did, both IgG and IgA type of antibodies. So that clearly shows that, hey, you could be breathing these out. Oh, bushes. <laughs> so, well, that's clearly intriguing, right? So they wanted to know, could you then transfer it from one individual to another? And what they did in order to assess for that is they studied I think it was somewhere like around 35, maybe 34 pairs of parents versus children. And they looked at vaccinated parents. I believe kids were unvaccinated. Vaccinated parents, unvaccinated parents, and those who were infected. And they were able to show that indeed there was a correlation that post-vaccination or infection, if parents had had the antibodies that there was a likelihood that unvaccinated children also had antibodies in their saliva so this is basically as far as these authors are concerned this is the first time anyone has demonstrated that there, that perhaps there's a fully unrecognized way of looking at of looking at how passive immunity could be transfer between individuals that we were not aware of until this point and they consider that this is a, a significant proof that most likely this is occurring because of the fact that the antibodies are being transferred between these individuals and they were claiming we don't see any other likely reason and they described it as parsimonious <laughs> and in research that apparently refers I had to look it up that apparently refers that whenever you have a parsimonious theory it's most likely explains what what you think you claim you're seeing okay that, I thought that was interesting but I thought there might be a, another possible explanation for this, which is why I presented this topic before. And when I presented this before, I mentioned that another way that this we could be observing this effect is not because antibodies are being transferred be between individuals, but because exosomes with an antigen are being transferred between individuals. And in this case, the antigen of interest, of course, would be the spike protein. We do know that spike protein can be present in exosomes. I pre presented an entire series on this that you can check out. And, but we just don't know whether you can, you can breathe them out. So I would have been super interested to see if these authors could be able to prove that. So whether they could take the same masks that they used to, to look for antibodies and whether they could actually identify the presence of spike protein in, on, the, on those masks and more specifically spike protein in exosomes because at this point we still do not have any proof whether you can breathe out exosomes with spike protein 
in them. Now exosomes are tiny little balls, fragments of cells that basically can carry information, cellular molecular information between cells. They can circulate in blood. We do know that you can have exosomes in your breath. So it's just linking that information together. And I thought, well, while the Alterstad antibodies was the only way that explains the results, I thought another possible way of explaining those results would be through exosomes. So would be super interested if someone was actually testing this. All right, so basically I get to remake this topic for you. Uh, and now that this is peer review publication and hopefully it will stick around on, on YouTube this time, this time and the original one that was removed despite my appeals is now available on Patreon account so please check it out it's part of the part of the exosome series don't mind me rocky train with flip flops on alright so I just want to say Thank you for your support. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Please share this video with others. This is how we grow. Please leave a comment. Please give us your thoughts. Please check out our Patreon account and become a supporter if you're interested. Obviously, that's also helping us grow. And finally, we also just recently created a Substack account as well. Another way how you could support our, our channel. Okay, that's all I have for you. And bye for now, everyone. Ciao.